Okay, so welcome to part two of this video on uh, limit points. And in the previous video, what I stated was that if uh, a set is closed, uh, then uh, an equivalent condition is that it contains all its limit points. And uh, this goes both ways, in fact. If it contains all its limit points, it is a closed set. So firstly, let's prove in the... Um, Let's prove the forward direction. I, if a set is closed, so let's take C, uh, which is a subset of a metric space X. So if we have a metric space here, we have some set C here, which is a closed set, and uh, we want to prove uh, that it contains all its limit points. So uh, the definition of being closed at the moment that we have is that it, its complement is open. So C complement is open. Now, uh, the way we're going to prove this is a proof by contradiction. Uh, suppose this were not true. Suppose uh, it was not true, not true, uh, that C uh, contains all its limit points, or uh, its limit points. Then what would be true? It would be true that there exists a point Y, which is an element of C complement, uh, such that Y is a limit point of C. A limit point of C. So basically, if it's not true that all of the limit points of C are in C itself, then it has to be true that there is a limit point Y, which is an element of C complement, which is, um, if I get my colour pen, uh, C complement is all the things that are not in C. So it's all of um, this, basically, all of this, and all the bits in between as well. Like that. Okay, so if, if it's not true uh, that... Um, that C contains all its limit points, then there must exist a limit point that is outside of C, i.e. which is an element of C complement, which implies uh, that uh, Y is an element of C complement. But we know that C complement is open, is open. If C is closed, then C complement is open, okay? And we know that the, now let's recall the definition of being open. The definition of being open is that all points are interior. So in particular, Y is an interior point of C complement. An interior point of C complement. Okay, uh, so that means that uh, there exists, that Y, uh, there exists an epsilon neighborhood around Y. So if this is Y, uh, that implies there exists an epsilon neighborhood, so let's say uh, a ball around Y of some size epsilon, uh, such that uh, this ball is completely contained within C complement. Okay? Uh, but why is that a contradiction? Because uh, we said that Y was a limit point of C, which means that for all uh, balls uh, that you take of any radius around Y, uh, there is a point in C uh, which is in there, there uh, for all balls, uh, for all, let's say, for all r greater than zero, um, uh, the ball uh, of what, uh, okay, let's say, for all r of great, greater than zero, there exists a little c is an element of big C, such that little c is an element of the ball around y of radius r. Okay, but that's a contradiction, a blatant contradiction, because, um, because, uh, this ball over here, um, this ball over here of size epsilon was supposed to be completely contained in C complement, i.e. it doesn't contain any elements of C. But now I'm saying that every ball uh, of whatever radius you pick, in particular this ball of radius epsilon, must have an element of C in it. So that's a contradiction there. Uh, so it cannot have been true uh, that you could find a point uh, y in C complement, uh, which was also a limit point of C. Therefore, it must be true that C contains all of its limit points. So C contains all of its limit points. Contains all of its limit points. Okay, so now let's prove the other direction. Let's prove the other direction. The other direction is that we want to prove that if I have a set, if I have a set C, I have a set, in fact, let's, uh, let's shake it up a bit, let's have a set S. If I have a set S, uh, which contains all its limit points, I want to prove that it is closed. Contains all its limit points. I am required to prove, RTP, uh, that S is closed. Okay, well, um, if S contains all its limit points, uh, that means uh, that any point Y so, um, 
any point y, which is an element of S complement, is not a limit point for S. Uh, because S contains all its limit points, is not a limit point uh, for S. That implies uh, that there must exist an epsilon greater than zero um, such that the ball around y of size epsilon uh, it is contained within S complement. The reason for that is... Okay, let me draw a picture. Here is our set S. Now, I am saying that S contains all its limit points. So if I take a point Y, which is not in S, and we are, of course, assuming that uh, we aren't dealing with uh, S being the whole space at the moment. Okay, uh, because uh, clearly, um, clearly, if, it, if S is equal to the whole space, uh, then S do then the whole space obviously does contain all its limit points, but it's also closed. So instantly, the theorem is true if S is the whole space. So we're assuming we can find a Y in S complement. Okay, uh, so we assume we can find a Y in S complement. So we find this Y. We're now saying that it cannot be a limit point. Now, the definition of being a limit point was that for all uh, R greater than zero, uh, there exists uh, the ball... Uh, around y, the open ball around y of radius r had a point of s inside it, so there was a little s uh, inside this ball. So if it's not true that uh, y is a limit point, then that must mean that for some radius epsilon, uh, there uh, there must ex that means that you must be able to find a ball uh, of some radius epsilon which contains absolutely no points of s, because if you couldn't, then y would be a limit point. So there are no uh, there are no S's, there are no elements of S which are elements of this ball, which implies that this ball consists solely of elements uh, which are in S complement. So it's a subset of S complement. But that is exactly analogous to saying uh, that um, S complement is open uh, because um, Y is an arbitrary point, is an arbitrary point in S complement. Uh, it, so it's why is an arbitrary point in S complement, and I have found you. I have found a uh, an open ball um, around Y, uh, namely uh, the ball at uh, centre that Y of radius epsilon, which is completely contained in S complement, which implies that Y is interior is interior uh, in S complement. Uh, which implies that since y was arbitrary, s complement is open. And s complement being open is exactly the definition for s being closed. So that is the proof that if you have a set which contains all its limit points, then it is necessarily also closed.